Now that we understand the relationship between a system's frequency response and its time response, we now know how to alter a system's frequency response in order to achieve a desired time response. And we'll use that to design controllers in the following way. So first, we'll analyze the time response behavior of a system to determine its deficiencies. Since ultimately what we care about is how the system behaves in the time domain, uh, that's what we will use to, to determine is the system too slow, does it overshoot too much, whatever. We will then plot the system's open loop frequency response. Then we'll add a controller to change the shape of the frequency response plot to cause a corresponding change in the system's time response behavior. Make it faster, make it overshoot less, etc. We, in particular, are going to use Bode plots, and we're going to use the open loop. We're going to use Bode plots, and we're going to use the open loop frequency response. And the reason that we do that is because of the property of Bode plots. The Bode plot of the plant will literally add to the Bode plot of the controller. For example, you know, our open loop might be something like this, a controller in series with a plant. And since the transfer functions multiply, their Bode plots add. And we remember this um, from the way that we sketch Bode plots by component. If we had something like a Nyquist plot, uh, we don't get that nice additive behavior. So it's harder to determine the type of controller that we need to, to reshape the, the system's frequency response. Furthermore, if we used a closed loop system, which perhaps has a, a transfer function something like this, the addition of a controller wouldn't just add to the Bode plot of the plant. You don't get that nice sort of linear relationship. So employing Bode plots with the open loop frequency response is a very natural way and an easy way to design controllers. One thing that you have to be a little bit careful about is that a system's frequency response, its Bode plot, the magnitude and the phase depend on one another. So if, for example, you're trying to achieve a certain steady state error by changing the DC gain, or you're trying to achieve a certain speed of response by changing the gain crossover frequency, you may adversely affect the system's phase margin and therefore its overshoot. And so because of that, often this process is iterative. You sort of have these competing goals that are always fighting against one another. Furthermore, this relationship between the time response of a system and its frequency response at this point is very qualitative. Um, if we had a canonical system, we could define explicit relationships between time response and frequency response. But um, in our case, and when you have sort of non-canonical systems, you won't have an exact relationship between the time response and the frequency response. So that will also force you to iterate. You'll sort of have a sense of whether or not this change will make the system faster or slower, but you don't necessarily know by how much. So let's go through a simple example. And so the first step is to analyze a system's time response. So let's say that we look at a system step response and we determine that this behavior isn't good enough. Let's say um, we've decided that this is too slow, that it has too much overshoot, and that the steady state error is too large. So basically we need to improve everything about the time response. The second step is then to plot the system's open loop Bode plot. Looking at the open loop Bode plot, we then get a sense of how we need to reshape it in order to address these deficiencies we identified from the time response. So since it's too slow, think about how we would want to change the open loop frequency response to make it faster. Okay. 
So we recall that gain crossover frequency is an indication of speed of response. So we want to push the gain crossover frequency out to a higher frequency. Okay. Now let's look at the overshoot requirement. We want to bring the overshoot down. How do we do that? So one thing to look at is, you know, we may want to bring down this resonant peak. Another thing to look at is the system's phase margin. So the phase margin is how far above minus 180 degrees the phase is at the gain crossover frequency. So that gives us an indication of phase margin and gives us an indication of overshoot. So we want to in increase the phase margin. We want to bring, bring the system up. And in particular, we want to bring it up at the system's new gain crossover frequency. So it may not be at this location any longer. It may be pushed out. And then finally, we want to improve the system's steady state error. We want to reduce the steady state error. So think about how we might achieve that. So steady state behavior is indicated by the system's sort of DC behavior, its behavior at low frequencies, where this specifically is the DC gain. So in this case, um, its magnitude at low frequencies is 0 dBs, which corresponds to a magnitude of 1. So we want to take this DC gain and we want to push it up. So we want to increase the magnitude at low frequencies. The way that we're going to achieve these changes, you know, one option would be to redesign the plant. So that's one option. The other option is to add control. And so that's what we'll do in step three. So we basically want to push up the DC gain, we want to push out the gain crossover frequency, and we want to bump up the phase margin. And you could think about what the frequency response plot of different controllers that we've used might be. Think about what it would look like with a PD controller or a PI controller. I'm going to go ahead and propose a controller that we haven't heard about yet. It's called a, a lead compensator. So, so we're going to try a lead compensator. I'm just going to give it to you, um, but we'll discuss it further as, as we go along in the course. The structure of a lead compensator is basically that it has a single zero so we'll give it some gain k has a single zero and a single pole. But the zero is smaller than the pole. So you could almost think of it as, as if the zero is dominating a little bit. So let's go ahead and plot the Bode plot of this controller to get a sense of how it will affect our system when we add it to the plant. In order to plot this, I'm going to go ahead and change the transfer function into Bode form, you know, so that the zero has a form TS plus one, the pole has a form TS plus one. So in order to achieve that, I'll factor out a Z out of the numerator, and I'll factor out a P out of the denominator, and I'll be left with 1 over z times s plus 1 divided by 1 over p times s plus 1. And now I'll go ahead and draw the Bode plot, where we'll have a magnitude plot versus frequency and a phase plot. Versus frequency. Okay. In general, the way that we could plot the Bode plot 
is as we've done before. We can pl plot it component by component. So plot the Bode plot of a gain, plot it for a simple zero, plot it for a simple pole, and then add them up. I'm going to go ahead and do it all at once. Um, if you don't exactly follow what I'm doing, you can always do it yourself um, component by component, then add them. So looking at this, um, the system has some DC gain corresponding to K and Z over P. So let's say that 0 dBs, and there'll be some gain. If we want to bump up the DC gain, if we want to bump up the magnitude at low frequencies, what must need to be true about K times Z over P? Well, basically, this needs to have a magnitude greater than, than 0 dBs, or greater than 1. And if we do that, then we'll have a positive magnitude at low frequencies, as we desire. We then have a pole and a 0. And in general, zeros cause the slope to go up at 20 dBs per decade and poles cause the slope to go down at 0 dBs per decade. Since the zero is smaller, that means that we will hit it first. You know, the break frequency for the zero is 1 over t, where t is 1 over z. So the break frequency for the zero will occur at z. And since that's smaller than p, we'll hit that first. So then we'll start to go up at 20 dBs per decade. And we'll continue to go up at 20 dBs per decade until we hit the pole. And then when the pole comes in, the pole adds in a slope of minus 20 dBs per decade. And so in essence, the positive slope from the zero and the negative slope from the pole cancel. And the magnitude plot levels off again. And we get a shape like that for the magnitude plot. If we consider the phase, again, zeros, the phase starts off at zero and then it moves up to plus 90. With a pole, the phase starts at zero and it moves down to minus 90. Since the zero is smaller, we'll hit that first. And in particular, we approximate it as beginning one decade early. So at 0.1z, we go from flat, and then we ramp up. And eventually, we'll either stop at 90, which will happen, uh, you know, we approximate as happening one decade after the break, so at 10 times z, or it will level off once the pole comes in. So once the pole comes in, there's the phase is sloping up because of the zero, and the phase is sloping down because of the pole, and it approximately cancels. So it'll eventually level off. Then it will start going down again, either when the zero runs out or the pole comes in. And ultimately, it'll stop going down one decade after the pole. And we know that it will stop going down at, at zero degrees. So it starts at low frequencies at zero degrees, and at high frequencies it goes back to zero degrees. And we know that the behavior is like that because at high frequencies the zero goes to positive 90 degrees and the pole goes to negative 90 degrees. And so if you sum those two, 90 plus negative 90 is zero. So ultimately, this is the shape of the open loop Bode plot, the open loop frequency response of our controller, our lead compensator. And if we put it in series with our plant, then the new Bode plot, or the Bode plot of the controller together with the plant, is just simply the sum of the controller's Bode plot and the plant's Bode plot. So if we do this, um, at low frequencies, 
will have a positive magnitude. So we'll shift this up by adding the two together. And let's say we don't have the zero come in for a while, so it just adds a constant amount. And then let's say that we hit the zero somewhere in this, this area. Then the magnitude goes up and we're adding even more at high frequencies. So if we're adding 5 dBs at low frequencies, maybe we're adding you know, 10 or 20 dBs at high frequencies. And there's some transition period. Okay, so that red line is, is the two together. And we do the same thing with the phase. So at low frequencies, we're adding in zero degrees. So it's almost unchanged. And then when the zero comes in, we get a bump in phase. And then eventually at high frequencies, it goes back down to zero degrees. So let's say we get something like that. And so by the addition of our controller to our plant, you can see that we meet all of our goals. So we get more DC gain, which helps reduce the steady state error. The gain crossover frequency is where we cross zero decibels. So we push that out to a higher frequency. So larger gain crossover, call it omega c. And this was where our old crossover frequency was. So that was our old phase margin. This is our new crossover frequency. We got a little bit more phase margin to help the overshoot. Again, this is an iterative process, so if that's not sufficient, then, then we could try to add more, or we could try and change the location of the pole and the zero of our controller. So there's a compensator that will achieve all the, the goals we were trying to achieve. It turns out that a lead compensator achieves similar goals to a PD compensator, PD controller, where if you recall, a PD controller has a derivative term, it has a constant multiplying the derivative of the error, and then it has a proportional term, which is a constant multiplying, which is a constant just multiplying the error. And you can also recall that this has the form of a gain and a zero. So let's think about how the Bode plot of a PD controller is different from the Bode plot of a lead compensator. In particular, let's look at the magnitude plot. So what would the magnitude plot of the PD compensator look like? So again, we have a gain out front. Here it's just k. Up here it was k times z divided by p. And we would want that to be greater than 1, to be above 0 dBs to help the DC gain. And then we have a 0 that comes in. And then the slope starts going up at 20 dBs per decade. But there's no pole, so it never stops going up. So this, it continues to slope up and goes to higher and higher magnitudes as frequency gets larger. So comparing these two, comparing the magnitude plot of a PD compensator to the magnitude plot of a lead compensator, can you see any, any issues? Or can you make a guess as to which one is preferable? And so what you see is that the PD 
tends to amplify high frequencies more than the lead. The lead levels off, the PD keeps going, so it amplifies high frequencies, which is an issue because noise tends to be high frequency. Okay. And so this is something that we've discussed previously about differentiation, and we can see it explicitly in the Bode diagram in the frequency response plot.